week's chord substitution lesson, uh, you will need our Glory to His Name handout. You can find that at newmercysmusic.com. And that's gonna have marked on there exactly what I'm talking about, show you the chords I'm using and where I'm transitioning to those chords. And then I think it'd be helpful for you to have a hymn book so that way you can kind of look what chords we are substituting for what would originally be at that word and what chord we're using. Now, Glory to His Name is kind of an interesting hymn. We usually sing it like this. So with that in mind, with that kind of lively style, a lot of times we don't think much about substitutions, even though even in the lively style, we can add basic substitutions like some of the substitutions that I have on this paper. Not as many, because a lot of these substitutions are gonna need time to develop. So when you're adding these, if you wanna add all of them, you'll definitely need to slow down the hymn. Now as we start with this hymn, Glory to His Name, the entire song uses the one chord, the four, and the five chord. So we're gonna speak about this hymn in the key of A flat, that is the key that it's most commonly written in. So if we're in the key of A flat, the one chord is A flat, and that's a major chord. The four chord is D flat major, and the five chord is E flat major. So those are the chords that you are going to see in this hymn book. Now, obviously, we want to substitute those to create interest and variety. So as in times past, we've talked about what substitutes can we use for the one, and what can we use for the four? What can we use for the five? So in this chart here that I have for you on this lead sheet, I have all the chords that I used as substitutes and how I use them. So I'm gonna walk you through just this lead sheet and what chords I saw and why I chose to use that chord. Now, a lot of the more advanced substitutions will come after I do more of the basic substitutions. So you might be in a point where you're just right now at basic substitutions, where you're substituting the minor two and the minor three and the minor six, and that's where you feel pretty comfortable, and that's great. Now, as you get more comfortable with that, then we can start looking at the more advanced substitutions that we may find. So in this first phrase here, down at the cross where my Savior died, my chord progression is A flat on beat one, and then on beat two I use a C major chord, and then on beat three I use a F minor, which is going to be the minor six, and then I go to an A flat seven over an E flat on beat four, which leads beautifully to that four chord. I change the melody there. I'll show you why in a second. And then I go to an A2 and I resolve it and then add another beat. So that's kind of the first phrase there. So let's talk about it. Let me just show you what your basic substitution would be. Basic substitution would say I'll play my one chord for the first two beats and then I don't want to stay on the one for the whole time like the original hymn has, so I'm going to substitute it with the minor six. And I'm going to stay on that minor six and then go to the four like it's written and then the one like it's written. So that's your basic. Now here's the cool thing. Because I decided I'm going to play a one chord and then I'm going to play a minor six, now we can start looking into, okay, what actually leads into that minor six? So if you're familiar with the five of the five or five of the minor six or five of you fill in the blank chords, that's what we're gonna see a lot of in this hymn today. So as I'm going to this F minor chord, I'm starting on the one, and I know I'm going to the F minor, so I'm gonna look at my melody and see, okay, if I add the five of the minor six, which in this instance, if F, this is F minor, the five chord of the key of F would be a C major chord. So if it doesn't clash with the melody and it works with the leading, I'm gonna to try to add it in before I go to the F minor. So beat one, 
and then adding this C major. And you hear how that leads beautifully into that minor six. So once you get your basic chord substitutions down, you can go back and look, can I add the five of this minor chord to lead into it? Does it fit? Does it work with the leading? And if you notice, watch what happens to the bass. My bass is literally stepping down, which is what I want to hear. It adds a really nice contrast to the hymn. Now after that, okay, now that I've hit that F minor, I know I'm going to a D flat chord. So now I need to figure out, okay, what chord leads into a D flat chord? Well, a 1-7 chord, here's my 1 chord, a 1-7 leads nicely into the 4. So whenever you're going from a one chord to a four chord, or maybe a minor six to a four, or you're leading into a four, you can often try to add in this one seven. Now, because I'm adding in the one seven, my melody on this beat is where my, and it actually has a G in the melody. Well, if you notice the one seven has a G flat in it. Well, typically we say, don't throw in a substitution if it's gonna alter the melody or mess it up. And that is true, but as a pianist who may be playing this hymn solo, I can alter the melody. And instead of stepping down, I'm actually gonna go under and go up to Savior. And then I like to add in that two resolving up. That's a beautiful suspension chord that resolves from the two to the three. Now the next beat, okay, here we go. I'm leading into the F minor, so can I use the C major? Yes. Now here we go. I'm going from a one chord, I'm cleansing, and I'm about to go to a five chord. Well, instead of playing that five chord for an extended period, let's see if the five of the five will fit. So my five chord is E flat. If I'm in the key of E flat, the five chord of E flat is a B flat. And it's gonna fit perfectly because the melody is an A flat, which makes it a B flat seven chord. And instead of going directly to an E flat, I'm gonna do a four three suspension. Now, here's where it gets fun. Instead of going right to the one on there, I'm gonna opt out of that chord and I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to the five of the minor six, which is F, because I'm going to that F minor. So on there, now similar leading as the first phrase. Now in your handout, a few things that I didn't throw in there, I did not tweak the melody at all where it says down at the cross where my, I didn't change it in your lead sheet for a few reasons. One, I want to leave the melody strictly the way it's written because that's really as we're looking at hymns and substituting, we are looking at the melody, reading through chords, and so you have the melody with the chords, and I don't really want to tweak that. I want you to be able to look at a melody line and maybe see something different. Now, as we go into the final phrase of this verse, we have the blood applied, and again, I'm resolving that chord as an two suspension, resolving to the three. And then on glory here, usually it's an A flat chord, but I don't want to use that chord. Now remember we've talked about, often you can use the four chord as a substitution. So if I notice what my four chord is, a D flat major, and I add that melody note, which is that C, it gives me this beautiful D flat major seven chord. And it leads me nicely into our four over five, which is technically, if we were to give the appropriate term for this, I wanna show you this chord spelled out. So we have an E flat, then we have an E flat seven, E flat nine, 
E flat 11, E flat 13. Technically, we'd call it an E flat 13. It's easier to say a four over five chord, and obviously the melody makes it a nice four major seven. And then I'm leading from this um, four over five, going to the one chord, and I'm actually gonna throw in the four diminished seven over the five. So if my melody fits in kind of this cadence um, where we're leaving the five chord and we're going into the one, if the melody fits, I can actually throw in a diminished four chord underneath that melody and often it will be a fully diminished seven. So I have to look for that melody. Sometimes it won't work, but in this instance, it makes a beautiful chord. So we have this glory two. And then right on name, I don't land on the one chord. I don't want to just be basic right here because the next chord that's coming is a four chord. So here's a really cool thing. We've talked about leading into the next chord, always looking to the next chord. So looking at this four chord, if I'm in the key of D flat, my four chord in the key of D flat is G flat. My five is A flat. So interesting enough, the five chord is the same as the one chord in the key we're in. So instead of me landing right on the one, I'm going to play the four over five of the four chord. Kind of interesting. So watch it. We're glor. Then I'm going to resolve to the one and then a one augmented. So one augmented leads beautifully to a four chord as well, as long as it doesn't mess with the melody. You'll have to mess around with that. But again, let's go back and put that in real time. So what's happening here is I knew I wanted to go to a minor two on beat three, um, glory two. I knew I wanted that. So instead of me just leaping to it, I'm going to step down my bass and change my chord to an A flat over C, B flat minor. Now I'm going to land on the one chord and I'm going to keep that bass walking down because I'm going to go to an F minor. So I'm going to walk it down to a C minor over a G, A flat over E. Why? Because I'm going to the D flat chord. So I literally took this mel this bass note, glory to his name. And we're holding out name. Glory to. So I literally took that bass all the way down for a whole octave. So let's play that in real time. the flat seven that we talked about in our last video, the flat major seven. And I resolved it to a four suspension chord, E flat, four suspension. And then similar leading as in the third line of this hymn. basic and then see if you can start to add some more advanced substitutions such as looking for the five of whatever chord you're going to uh, when you're going from a one to a four chord look at ways that you can make that more unique by using a one seven a one augmented uh, oftentimes you can use a minor five for that we did not use that in this hymn but there's many ways we can do that so I hope this helps you as you continue on your journey of chord substitutions.